Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to yet again another fantastic indie creator interview. It's your K Priest here, Cody, and we're keeping it geekly with our returning guest, John Dexter. We're here to break down Dime Store Detective Issue 2 and everything in between. John, welcome to the stream. How are you today? Good, good. Long time no see, Cody. Uh, I think we were doing uh, Alpha Dogs Issue 3 last we, uh, last we spoke. It's been uh, kind of a whirlwind of uh, Kickstarters that I'm crazy enough to uh, keep on doing uh, with these two <laughs> different, totally different entities and mm -hmm. subject matters. But it, they're a lot of fun. It's a passion of mine to uh, tell these two stories. And right now, Dime Store Detective launched less than 24 hours ago and we are at 75 percent funded right now so the great wow. thing is, is people have tuned in for issue two they really i had a great response for issue one um left on a great cliffhanger because i love reading and uh writing cliffhangers so people uh people have really been enthusiastic about uh this this noir story of mine yeah i want to say uh the our, our first introduction was uh me like I, I was trying to buy more indie comics and i, I want to say like we met through that we interviewed on the first issue dime store uh and then came back to the alpha dog uh so yeah. it, i i always love uh forming those type of friendships uh with creators because it's it's always awesome to get a sneak peek into the, the mind you know that creates these ips and what goes into that so for anyone who's maybe watching for the first time can you give us a nice little short introduction to who you are and then let's talk a little bit about alpha dogs and dime store detective <laughs> So, um, as you know, my name is John Dexter. I've been, uh, I started doing the Kickstarter for my comics back in 2021. Uh, I had had the idea for Alpha Dogs about six years ago now, but uh, money, of course, is always tight. And so I was slowly building up the money to to be able to get a comic started, um, mm -hmm. get about 60 pages and send it to publishers. And then COVID hit and everything shut down. So I knew of Kickstarter, I'd heard of it. And I thought, well, um, this is a perfect avenue for someone like me. And that was uh, that was the beginning of uh, me doing this. It's been uh, really a lot of fun. Enjoy it, that, uh, that creative aspect and telling the story that I think people have really gravitated towards. People um, have given me a lot of good response for Alpha Dogs. And so I had this other totally different story of Dime Store Detective that I actually kind of came up with about 10 years ago. And... Mm -hmm. But I just I had wrote it as a screenplay because that's kind of was always my lifelong dream is to become a screenwriter. Um, and then I kind of thought Alpha Dog would play better as a comic. I was um, one of the many teenagers in the early mid '90s that uh, watched uh, X Men cartoon, and that just made me fall in love with comics. And I've been a huge comic fan ever since. Um, I think I think. Um, X-Men cartoon was kind of like the Star Wars to the generation before mine. Totally different uh, entity of Dime Store Detective. Um, Alpha Dogs was uh, about this dog who was on the run with his owner and uh, this older grumpy dog from this group of mercenaries uh, trying to manipulate the dog's powers. They're attempting to capture them and uh, the dogs have the you know what? Let me, let me hold on. Let me back up. I got you're all. Good, you're good. You're good. You're okay. Good. Let me try this again. Um, I had originally done Alpha Dogs because of uh, COVID had hit, and I wasn't able to get my um, material to any publishers. So I uh, ran a Kickstarter for Alpha mm -hmm. Dogs, and people really responded to it. And I was able to get enough confidence to try a whole different genre with Dime Store Detective, which is just as good. It's just a totally different uh, type of story. I've always been drawn to the old noir stories, the 1940s, Humphrey Bogart, like Maltese Falcon, and also the more recent um, movies like LA Confidential and um, True Detective. So I wanted to tell a story like that. I wrote a script, but there was just something I thought that was kind of missing. And mm -hmm. um, I integrated this story of this uh, evil presence that's been locked away um, that is inadvertently released and wreaks havoc on this family. And uh, there's a lot of murders that take place uh, <laughs> because of this uh, evil entity. And then we fast forward to the present day, 40 years later, with the detective um, 
Mackinder, who's the center of the story, mm-hmm. he comes upon this crime scene where a woman is uh, dead in this Christ-like display in the forest. And the serial killer has left her body over the burial grounds. The detective's father and uncle buried multiple bodies 40 years ago when they were involved in their moonshine war. And people who don't know about it is um, this takes place in North Georgia during um, the dry counties. And back in, as this story takes place with a flashback in 1981, this family has been four generations of making moonshine. They're feared, but also respected in the community. Mm-hmm. And then this new kind of gang comes in connected to the Dixie Mafia, who are were actually a true gang that um, did a lot of murder for hire uh, pills and um, a lot of crime. And the, the police down there were very frightened of them. If you've ever heard of, uh, you know, the movie Walking Tall with Buford T. Puster, they did a remake with The Rock back like, yeah. seven years ago. That was that was based on the that's a true story involving the Dixie Mafia. And so they kind of come go to war with this uh, this family, the Mackinder family. And the story is kind of told through the, the son's eyes, but also the father's eyes. And they, like I said, they kind of inadvertently released this demonic um, evil presence uh, that um, they have to, you know, it's sort of not to give, I'm trying not to give too much away. We're only an mm-hmm. issue too. <laughs> um, that, uh, you know, like I said, re- wreaks havoc and um, leaves, leaves a waste of bodies behind it. So the story kind of goes back and forth, t- kind of that uh, true detective, Stephen King's it type of feel yeah. where we see the um, world through the eight-year-old's eyes and also 40 years later when he becomes this hardened detective that kind of carries the, the family's flame when everybody in town and in the county knows them as this notorious family murderers and the detective is out there to prove that his dad is actually uh, a really good guy and may not be uh, the uh, villain that the town's portrayed him. It's a very expansive story that uh, has a lot of mystery to it. You know, if, if I would best describe it as true detective meets Stephen King's it with a little bit of Dukes of Hazard in there. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love, I love how intricate it, it is. And you mentioned uh, there was a lot of bodies that were piling up a lot of crime were these any of these uh, by any chance like based upon real life events well you know it's yes and no it the story is inspired by um in which really kind of made the story come together after it sit kind of in my shelf for a long time um it's was inspired by this podcast i listened to about this guy um his dad was in the Dixie Mafia. He was a hitman for the Dixie Mafia back in the 1960s. And it didn't matter how many people his dad murdered, you know, <laughs> what he did, the pills that he popped and anything. The son still kept this uh, love for his father. You know, to him, his father could do no wrong. He was the strongest guy, the fastest guy. And it just, it kind of connected with me, the story of a son that um, even through everything, all the horrible deeds his dad did, the dad was a great father to his son and taught him how to be a man, um, how to be respectful to adults and stuff. So that kind of resonated with me that it doesn't matter to a certain aspect what your what your family, what your mom or dad do, it, you will always carry a love for them. And you know, with my story, the dad is not that terrible of a guy. The, the dad is actually a, a a really great guy, which again, not to give too much away, which we find out as the story kind of slowly unravels that um, the town may have pegged the father uh, wrong and mm-hmm. the detective is, is out to prove it and kind of um, try and tries to um, like I said, carry that, that, that torch um, for the family. And, and even though, He's hated by City Hall, hated by his colleagues at the, at the department. Uh, he doesn't care. He's out mm-hmm. to um, bring peace to families of murder victims, no matter the cost. And it's cost him a lot of uh, promotions. He's kind of this beat detective. It gets a lot of disrespect because he doesn't go along with the brass, the top brass out there. So there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of tension throughout the story. There's a lot of history there. The detective has this 
uh, had a relationship with a fellow detective that we kind of not really hit a little bit of issue one that we really get into with issue two. Um, and he kind of had to, he broke it off with her to, to protect her because mm-hmm. his family has just become and has been the bane of the county for the last 40 years. So who's the creative team involved on this project with you? Uh, so Stone Tower Studios are are the producers. They did the art. They did the uh, everything involved with it. Um, they put together the trailer. Um, Lucas uh, Irita is the project manager, I guess you call it, for um, for the Stone Tower Studios. He gets the uh, the people involved to to do the artwork. He's been terrific. I actually one of the covers is done by I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Philip Russer. Um, he does the tragedy comic, a really good guy. He his he's the manager agent that um, I had hired out to do the cover uh, cover B. If you look mm-hmm. at the Kickstarter, so I don't know if you have been able to show the trailer on your end or not, but uh, the trailer is absolutely terrific. That that uh, Stone Tower Studio did. It's um, if that doesn't get your attention, then I don't know. I don't know. I'm out of I'm out of ideas because the trailer is really terrific and it gives you a good feel of what i'm trying to tell this uh you know this southern gothic uh story Mm -hmm. that um kind of uh harkens back to you know a time that that we don't really um show too much in movies you know you've got this you know the salt of the earth type of people these moonshiners um you know they live in the appalachians and um there's a lot of you know, I guess urban legends to the Appalachian Mountains, the people that have disappeared, and that and that really plays a big hand in uh, Dimes for Detective, which we'll find out in issue two um, as we go along. I think people are going to be really, um, re- will really enjoy where the story is going for issue two. Issue one, as you know, with most comics, it's kind of a little tough because you're introducing these brand new characters, setting up the story, and just kind of getting your feet wet and hope people are interested enough and pique their interest to kind of, um, you know, um, support your comic book and come back for the next one. Because if they do, they will, they will be, uh, very much, um, satisfied with what they read. Absolutely. I think right now would be a perfect segue. Let's go ahead and pull up the, the campaign and uh, check out that trailer and see what all the hype is about. So we are looking at Dime Story Detective Issue 2 with a Issue 1 catch-up tier, Moonshiner's Murder, and a Supernatural Force in this 28-page comic thriller. Currently at $1,470 of a $2,000 goal with 33 backers and 29 days left to go. I mean, almost like funded right out the gate. How does that feel? Oh, it's, it's great. It's very satisfying that people are... Um, that much invested into what you're doing. It's, it's, it's absolutely terrific. Um, I mean, $2,000. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the funding goal, but as any creator know, that's not what it costs to do the Mm -hmm. comic. It's a little more expensive than that, but, um, so hopefully we can get to the funding goal and just jump past that. Um, but yeah, it's been a, it's been a very good response. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it just gets getting bigger and bigger. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I mean, if, I, I haven't heard anybody say, you know, this stinks. You know, I, I, I think what I present to the reader is a very original story, something they haven't watched or read before. So I think that's what is bringing people back and wanting to back so much for it. No, absolutely. So let's go ahead and uh, check out this trailer and uh, see what the hype is about. A very awesome video. And I, I think those interiors were uh, very gorgeous as well. So. I mean, how does it feel to be working on this genre? Like to have the, to have the two to balance between with uh, Alpha Dogs and uh, Dime Story Detective. Yeah, it's it's great. You know, I you know I don't pick the stories; they just kind of come to me. Um, mm-hmm. I like a lot of a lot of different genres, and this really spoke to me. I mean, like I said, I I, I love uh, Raymond Chandler's old stories, um, and I love that. Like I said, I love that noir feel, the detective gumshoe that's kind of running solo with um nobody to help him that that is not going to stop he's relentless to to solve the to solve the case and i also love supernatural stories but who doesn't you know this Mm -hmm. evil entity that i don't really i'm not i try not to get too specific of what it is where it came from because i i like the reader to kind of come up with it on their own and, and use their own imagination i think that works best um for people reading the story. You don't want to just spoon feed everybody um, your story. You kind of want them to think a little bit. So 
those are the covers. They're all terrific covers. Um, mm -hmm. I was about to say, these covers are just gorgeous. They are. They did a really great job. You know, I, I come up with the idea and kind of do a little sketch, but they, they put it way past my expectations. It's great. So are these uh, Clash of the Titans and the Evil Dead, like just some of your favorite movies that were out, out, out during the time or? It's, it's well, it, it's um, kind of a, um, oh, I don't want to say a play on words, but it's a little bit of foreshadowing. Um, mm. Evil Dead, because this evil presence um, in, the, I had to pick movies from 1981 because yeah, on yeah. the left of the screen, so on the left side is 1981. That's the detective's father, and as you can see from the architecture, we've got the old movie theater. And on the on the right side, well, right to me, um, is the detective in the present day. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can tell with the newer architecture, I th I just thought I, I it was a pretty cool idea. If I do no, say I so think, myself, I think that it, yeah, I think that's <laughs> that that's awesome. That is genius. So let's go yeah. ahead and take a look at some of these rewards here. We can get the issue one uh, PDF for five bucks. And you can get issue two PDF for six. You can it's get a little more. It's only a dollar. Oh, sorry to interrupt. It's a dollar more expensive, which is not that much because the comic is four more pages. Issue two is twenty-eight pages, where issue one was twenty-four. So I had to bump up the price mm -hmm. just a little bit, but you know, a dollar for the extra cost of four pages is pretty cheap. I should yeah, have probably yeah. did a little bit more, but. And then know. we have a Dime Store Detective issue one, uh, the physical uh, issue for ten bucks. And then you can get issue one and two PDF at 11. So an awesome bundle price there. Yeah, I think so. You're getting 40, what is it? Uh, 24, 48, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. So you're getting 52 pages of comic book for 11 bucks. You can't yeah. really do that. And then you have Dime Store Detective issue two, cover A at 12, cover B at 14, and cover C at 16. And then we have Dime Store Detective issue one and two at 23. So is this uh, both physicals together? Correct. Awesome. And then you also get the digital PDFs with those as well. And then the stretch goals too. At 40 bucks, you can have your name in the comic. Uh, at 40, we also have the custom package car. So give us a little bit about this. You actually get a physical car? Yeah, yeah. It's a toy car after the Barracuda uh, that the detective and the father uh, own. It's I wanted the, the Barracuda to kind of be a character in itself. Mm -hmm. The car is the rum runner's car as most people would know you know that they had to have a souped up muscle car to outrun the cops yeah <laughs> and the moonshiners that's their car is the 73 cuda and that car is handed down to detective mackiner that he drives currently um so like i said I, w I wanted to be kind of a character and so we did a custom uh mm -hmm. custom packaging for it i want to say wasn't that how nascar started was like yes the, yeah yeah it Absolutely. was uh, the, the, the people running from the cops outlaws and mm -hmm. everything yeah so we have the mega bundle at 60 bucks give us a little bit about this this looks like one hell of a bang for your buck yeah it is it's all every cover of dime store detective issue one and two had two different covers and issue three had, i'm sorry issue one has two different covers issue two has three different so you get all the covers you get your name in the comic book so it's a pretty good deal and uh like i said if you missed out or or just want to uh add some more to your collection and then we also have the Mega Mega Bundle too. So just a slew of yeah, the mega, rewards. Yeah, if you, yeah, the Mega Mega Bundle is uh, Alpha Dogs one through three. So you get all, every comic I've ever done, um, mm -hmm. all three Alpha Dogs and all three, all two Dumps for Detective, but every cover um, that I've done. And then we have original uh, page artwork at one hundred, and then a virtual meet and greet at two. So uh, what's this look like? Uh, you know, how long of a Zoom meeting can uh, they expect to have with you? Oh, well, for 200 bucks, they can talk to me for as much as long as they want. Um, <laughs> it's yeah, uh, no way to awesome. pick my brain or talk about the comics or whatever. Then we have some stretch goals. So at 3,000, the higher quality paper stock. At 4,000, we have Dime Store Detective sticker themed. At 5,000, an awesome limited print. And then at six, uh, more coming soon. So, I mean, already off to a fantastic start. Uh, nearing what, 2,000 already your first day out the gate? Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's been it's been going better than I expected. Um, hopefully, I get some more backers here. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully, we can be close to getting funded by uh, the time I wake up tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, with that being said, for anyone who might be on the fence about backing this awesome project, what would you like to say to them directly to help uh, push their opinion? 
Well, go check out the Kickstarter. Watch the trailer. I mean, if that doesn't pique your interest, I, I don't know. I don't know what you're into. But um, <laughs> there's also six preview pages. Um, issue two on there to mm-hmm. kind of get you a good feel. And like I said, if you everybody loves detective stories, everybody loves supernatural stories, where you're going to get both, and you're going to get something you've never really seen before. We're at uh, time period that doesn't really talk about that much. You know, the Southern Georgia. 1980 early 1980s um that's in black and white and then we get the present with this uh, supernatural entity that's uh, at odds with our detective so i don't know too many people that don't love stories like that yeah and i had the issue or i excuse me i had the chance to read issue number one and it was phenomenal it was it definitely uh you have a way writing where uh it keeps you kind of on the edge of your seat you don't know what's coming next and uh with that cliffhanger i'm really excited to see what's next in store for uh, these, uh, you know, this detective. So with that being said, we've come to one of my favorite parts of the show, John, and that's where I get to ask you for a little bit of advice for anyone who might be new or even seasoned listening. So with that being said, for anyone who is looking to add a little bit of, you know, mystery to their writing, something where they can keep readers guessing, you know, what's next, what would you offer them to kind of help them achieve that? Um, Well, I guess I would say come into a scene as late as possible you know, you don't want to come in with somebody saying hello, you know, you mm-hmm. want to come in and see where there's a dead body on, on the floor. Um, so it's really about pacing. And when you leave, you want to make sure you kind of cover enough bases to get the interest of the reader and make them care about the characters to see what's going to happen. I think that's a very important part to to any kind of story. You want to care about your character. So you leave them on this cliffhanger to where, oh my God, what's going to happen with Dimester Detective? As you know, mm-hmm. this teenager who is possibly possessed by a demon has this message that he has to get to the detective. So much so he's holding a priest hostage at gunpoint. <laughs> so that's pretty, uh, uh, the stakes are pretty darn high where we leave off. So definitely you want to get your stakes, build this character, make him care about you, make care about him and make the stakes as high as absolutely possible but but um you also want to make sure it's it's believable you know what i mean mm-hmm. even though you, luke skywalker has this the, the force which is obviously just a silly concept you buy into it because you set up he set up that story so well so it doesn't matter what it, what you're trying to sell if you um make it believable and keep in a realm of believability you'll be mm-hmm. surprised that the audience or the readers will will stay with you now, some awesome and sound advice john thank you so much for swinging by and making this happen i really appreciate it and it's always a pleasure to get you on the show and uh just you know chop it up uh, i i appreciate it and can't wait to get you on for future issues down the road for everyone watching it is new comic book day you have nothing to lose by backing this if you're unable to back simply putting this project on facebook twitter anywhere you can word of mouth is 100 percent free and it costs nothing so you have nothing to lose so with that being said we will leave you with that i hope you all have a fantastic wednesday afternoon or evening but most importantly guys keep it geekly